All right, so I have a couple questions here on the OM1, and uh, the first one is, uh, if I may ask about the Star AF, does it also work with zoom lenses? Can Panasonic lenses be fitted? Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, short answer is yes. Um, I don't have a lot of Panasonic lenses, but I do have the uh, the Panasonic 7 to 14 f4, so it is a zoom lens and it's a Panasonic, and uh, the Starry Sky have worked just perfectly fine on here. So I would imagine that applies to the primes and any other Panasonic lenses. All right, the next question here is uh, from Joseph McGrath, and it's it's quite long, so I'll just put the whole question down below. But essentially, he's asking, uh, what is a silent sequential? I use I see other photographers online referring to it, and is it the same as SH1? And what goes away with SH1 setting and leaving the SH2 mode, etc.? Uh, what settings are best to get the sharpest bird photos handheld and allow reduced shutter speeds? As you're aware already, there's a lot of different uh, shutter modes on the Home One. I should maybe do a whole video on that separately. But you're asking specifically about uh, silent sequential SH1 and SH2. So silent sequential and uh, SH2 SH2 are essentially the same thing, right? Except that uh, SH2 can go a lot faster frames per second. So silent sequential is limited to 20 fr frames per second. Uh, SH2 uh, can go as high as uh, 50 frames per second with a compatible lens or 25 frames per second with just about any other lens, assuming the autofocus motors in that lens can keep up. Now, what they both have in common is they will both uh, do continuous autofocusing, meaning it'll refocus with every frame that it takes, and also it has continuous auto exposure, so it's recalculating the exposure for every frame uh, between 20 frames per second and silent sequential up to 50 frames per second with SH2. Now, another advantage to SH2 is you don't get as much flicker in the viewfinder, if any at all, as you're taking the pictures versus silent sequential, uh, you will notice the flicker as it's firing off the images. And a lot of people prefer the uh, SH2 just for that. And uh, in both cases though, though, I think the way the OM system is doing it in SH2 is they're showing you the frames captured from the buffer and displaying it in the EVF versus a uh, silent sequential is showing you actually the live view off the sensor through the lens. So potentially uh, SH2 might have like a fraction of a second lag versus the silent sequential, which is a live view off the sensor directly. Uh, you know, in practice, I don't think there's any difference. They're both real time for all intents and purposes, but, um, and, and don't quote me on that. I'm just guessing, but I think that's what they're doing. Now, there's a couple of disadvantages to using SH2, which I think you've run into, and that is there is a minimum shutter speed required depending on if you're at uh, 25 frames per second or 50 frames per second. So when you're at 50 frames per second, like with your 300 f4, uh, your shutter speed is going to be uh, limited to 1 640th of a second. So you're not going to be able to use a slower shutter speed, uh, which is going to be a problem in low light, as you had uh, uh, mentioned. And then uh, at 25 frames per second, you're going to be limited to 1 320th of a second. Uh, so again, you know, for very low light situations, if you want to go slower than 1 320th of a second, uh, you can't use SH2. Now, silent sequential doesn't have a minimum shutter speed other than you really can't use a shutter speed slower than the frames per second that you set. So if you're at 20 frames per second, you really can't use a shutter speed slower than 1 20th of a second. Now, I talked about the continuous autofocus and subject detect and how it's going to refocus frame to frame to frame in silent sequential and SH2. But don't forget that it's also uh, continually calculating the exposure frame to frame to frame. Now you can disable that uh, by using the AEL button where you can lock the exposure to what you want and then start taking pictures. Or you can set the shutter button to lock the exposure on the first frame and then it won't have to recalculate exposure for every frame after that. And that's probably the preferred way to do that for your birds and flight type photography. But uh, make sure you go into the menu and set that to the way you want your uh, exposure to behave frame to frame to frame, whether you want it to lock or if you wanted to continually calculate for each frame. Now there's a couple other things that might affect the performance or frames per second that you're getting. And, and one is uh, noise reduction. You may want to turn that off completely because uh, that only applies to JPEGs only. 
And then also uh, there's a setting for detail priority, drive priority. Uh, you want to set that to drive priority. And then also there is a, a night vision mode for your EVF where it you know tries to brighten low light images, uh, which you might be using because you did mention you want to be shooting in lower light. Uh, you want to turn that off as well uh, if you want to have the fastest frames per second. Now that said, uh, long exposure noise reduction is automatically turned off when you're in silent sequential or SH2, so you don't need to worry about that. Now the last shutter mode we'll talk about is SH1, which goes up to 120 frames per second in RAW, uh, but that has a few limitations, right? It's going to lock exposure and it's going to lock focus on that first frame. So um, I think it'll be perfectly fine if the bird is flying horizontally along the you know, same focal plane, uh, you won't have any issues there. But obviously, if the bird's going to be moving towards or away from you, uh, you're going to lose autofocus very quickly, and you'll have to let go and refocus. Uh, another major limitation to SH-1 is the, the buffer in the OM-1 is only, I think, like 95 frames. So you're only going to get you know, but however, another advantage to using SH1, other than, you know, the 120 frames per second, is that you can use a much slower shutter speed of, say, like 1 15th of a second. So uh, you can use it at a much lower light than, say, something like SH2, which limits you to 1 640th at 50 frames or 1 320th at uh, 25 frames per second. All right, so the last part of your question is what settings would be best to get the sharpest bird photos handheld? and allow reduced shutter speeds. All right, so there's a lot of variables here that, uh, you know, some subjective, some objective. Uh, subjectively speaking, you know, like what is your tolerance for noise? You know, how high of an ISO are you willing to go? Me personally, I'm okay up to about 12,000 in combination with say DxO or Topaz. Uh, without any noise reduction, you know, I'm pretty okay up to ISO 3200. So that'll help me keep my shutter speeds up. Uh, and as far as settings go, more objective type things, uh, you want to probably uh, set your auto ISO uh, to between 200 and 3200 or up to 12,000 if you have noise reduction software. Uh, and you want to set your image stabilization to SIS auto uh, so it'll automatically detect if you're panning, you know, up and down, left and right, etc. And then also, um, you want to probably want to shoot an aperture priority and just lock your aperture at f4 so you're always wide open and having the maximum of light coming into the lens. Now when it comes to the shutter speed itself, which the camera's going to figure out on its own for the exposure because you're in aperture priority, but you know, I think the limit of 1 3 20th of a second that was set for SH2 actually makes the most sense uh, for birds in flight because when a bird is flying, right, that implies that its wings are flapping, right? And when its wings are flapping, uh, it's also moving up and down slightly. So even at 1 3 20th of a second, uh, you're going to get, at the very least, motion blur of the wings and very likely motion blur of the bird's body and head itself because of this up and down motion. So even at 1 3 20th of a second, it's going to be hard to get a tack sharp photo of a bird in flight. Now, the other option, of course, is to use silent sequential where you don't have that minimum shutter speed limit. Uh, and, you know, you can get down to maybe 1 20th of a second, but it's virtually impossible to get anything tack sharp at 1 20th of a second with a 300 millimeter f4 uh, without being on a tripod or at the very least a monopod. Uh, in which case, you know, if you're on a monopod or a tripod with one of those fancy gimbals and, and you have really good panning skills if you're handheld, uh, you know, and the bird is not flapping its wings and just gliding, uh, you might be able to get you know, get away with slower shutter speeds below 1 3 20th of a second and get a tack sharp image. But, you know, that's that's going to take a, a serious skill set and experience, I think, to, to, to be able to pull that off. All right, Joe, so I hope you found that helpful. And for everyone watching, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below, and I'll always do my best to try to answer them. And if you'd like to support the channel in these videos, you can buy me a coffee or make a small donation in the links below because they are greatly appreciated. But either way, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.